Hi, welcome back. I have realized that I have not done a wrap up in quite a while. Uh, I've not done a wrap up for the September month and now it's the end of October. Um, embarrassing, honestly. Uh, <laughs> So I'm doing it now. These are all the books that I've read in the month between September and October. I've read a plethora of books. For some of them I've done a reading vlog so I'm not going in too much depth of, about them. Uh, I'm going to link all the videos up there. But I've read some crazy books, I've read some really bad books, I've read some great ones. So um, wait for them. I would also like to add that my computer uh, decided that it, it, this month is going to be his off month so I decided to break. So. I'm on pen and paper. I started September with the fabulous and gargantuous task of finishing The Husky and His White Cat Shizun. Over 400 pages of a fantasy dame, so a Chinese uh, web novel turned into book uh, about the wonderful world cultivators. The plot is as follows. The protagonist is a tyrant. He slayed every enemy that encountered his way and he is now the most hated person in all ancient China and he is like well everybody who I loved is now dead so might as well just drink some poison and die he is like yeah I'm not going to be reincarnated into something great but at least I won't be like the most hated person in the entire world uh, but he gets reincarnated into the past which is not something that should happen and he gets reincarnated into his 16 years old self in the past. Uh, so he gets another chance to do it all again and protect those who he loves and those who he thinks he should love because he's very infatuated with, with one of the fellow cultivators. But he also thinks that he hates, hates his master, his shizun, but that's not the case. Um, it's a love story. It's uh, heavy on the trigger warnings. Uh, because this is a very sad and complicated and violent love story but was it worth it? Yes. Uh, there were some pacing issues throughout because I read it like all throughout a month. Uh, it took me so much time but it was so worth it. Uh, the payoff was worth it but the pacing was not consistent throughout all of the novels but still it was so good. It was so good. Ah! I gave the whole saga like an overall 4.75 stars. Then there are some books for one of my vlogs, so I'm going to link it up here somewhere. Um, and I started, I think it's my like reading 200 pages and like reading until I find another five stars. Uh, I started with Wayan by Esther Yee. This is an experimental novel about obsession with K-pop idols. Um, I don't think it was realized to its full potential because yes the protagonist is like an obsessive fangirl uh but so is everybody else who everybody else is supposed to be like normal people but they are not they're just as obsessive and weird so i don't know if like it's so short though i don't know it was a cool literary experiment but not fully realized i give it three stars and i read a book i'm so disappointed ah why was it so bad Better Than The Movies by Lean Painter. Everybody told me, this is so cute, you're going to love it. And then I didn't. Disappointed! This is cliche central. This is every other book that I've ever read strung into a book. It's not great, guys. This is a book about a girl who supposedly is obsessed with movies, but she's just obsessed with soundtracks. So it's like mismarketing. Uh, and she has to ally with her noisy, ruthful neighbor who actually kind of loves her, uh, but she thinks that he hates her to make somebody jealous. And it's just so stupid. I really did not like this book. This is a 1.5 stars. Then I read another book, which I have upstairs, but I'm very lazy. Uh, and this, it took me such by such a surprise. Uh, I read I Was Born For This by Alice Oseman. This is the best book by Alice Oseman that I've ever read. And I've read almost every other book that this person has written. Um, I Was Born For This is another book about the music industry, about fangirl, about fandom and fandom spaces. And it follows both a fangirl of a certain boy group called The Ark and one of the member of the group. 
it's so good. It's so great. It analyzes fandom without being judgmental. It brings light to situations that have have happened before, both in K-pop and maybe with like One Direction and stuff. I really liked it. Ellie Sosman knows her, their stuff. It was just great. I thought I had the brilliant idea to read Fourth Wing. I knew I was not going to like this book, but first, first thing first, um, this book has perfect pacing. This is what everybody told me about. It's addicting. Why is it addicting though? It, it's the pacing. In every page you have something that it's kind of important happening and that you maybe care about. So you have to know what happened next. Uh, I also really liked the disability rap. It felt genuine. Uh, it felt thought out. And I think it's something that is really uh, close and dear to the author. Uh, everything else though, babes. This is a romanticy, which is kind of a new fusion genre. And what you don't get about fusion genre is that if you write a romanticy, you have to be very good at writing romance and very good at writing fantasy, in my opinion. This was both disappointing in the fantasy aspect and in the romance aspect. So um, the author is a romance author and you can tell. It's one of, she has the writing style of those like 2015 romance novels that I really fucking hate, unfortunately. I find them cringy, I'm sorry. So you have this girl whose, whose surname is Sorengale and she enters this academy in which she has to become a dragon rider because her mom says so because she's like the grand general. It's not very thought out, the world building. And she has a disability and she meets this guy who can wield Shadow, who's called Zayden, and it's actually the enemy, but also in love with her. And it's bad and brooding. It's, it's not a bad book, it's just a bad romance and a bad fantasy, in my opinion. I read it in like two days, so that's that. I gave it two stars, though. <laughs> then I read a very wholesome queer novel, it's called The Backup Boyfriend. Actually, the, the plot is like every other romance that I've ever read, but it's, it's queer and it's surprisingly deep. There's a guy who wants to make his ex-boyfriend jealous by pretending to be with another guy who's hotter, uh, but it's very deep. They both suffer from uh, some kind of anxiety disorder and the mental health rep, I think, was done very good. Um, it was a wholesome, innocuous, queer novel. Um, I give it four stars. It was cute. Then, in between, like, the bridge from September to October, I finished the Mirror Visitor series. So I read Gli scomparsi di Chiar di Luna, La memoria di Babel e Ekin Tempesta, which are the um, book two, three, and four in the Mirror Visitor series by Crystal Lebeau. Um, I really like the series. Whoever told me that it was going to be split in two, so it's like two duologies that complete each other, it's very true. Um, the first duology, which is the first and second book, are very mystical and fantastical and colorful, and I really liked. Uh, the second book I gave 4.5 stars, I think, it's my favorite. And the other duology, it's like you get all the answers that you wanted to, it gets really philosophical, but I kind of bleak because it talks about war. Um, I still really liked it. The last book, the ending, I know a lot of people are not going to like it, but I really like French fiction and French fiction is weird and melancholic and those books are weird and melancholic. So I gave the third book, uh, the memory of Babel, Babel's memory, uh, a 4.25 stars. From Zacco's, I think, it's the last book I gave four stars. Let's do, in October I read a lot of the mangas. Uh, I read volumes 13 to 20 of Kamisama Kies or Kamisama Hajimamashita. The only love story that exists. Like, the only one. And the only good love story that exists. It's just like wonderful. It's a, a love story but also a friendship story between a normal girl who's just trying to survive because she's so fucking poor and uh, becomes like a local deity through misunderstanding and a the spirit of a fox who protects a certain place, a, a certain shrine. Um, and the thing is about this manga is that the romance is so genuine. 
are so lovely even though they're kind of like bickering and almost like a, a sprinkle of enemies lovers um but the friendships because this girl is such a genuine character she's so funny and attentive to her friends especially the female friendships they're wonderful if you want a manga about female friendships with a dash of romance um well not a dash of romance with a lot of romance but like it's about the friendship that she um connects with along the way uh, definitely comes on kiss i read a manga called innocent uh everybody told me this is one of the most beautifully drawn mangas that is out there that is true it's true it's based on a historical book about the french revolution about a french executioner uh like executioner family that really existed during the french revolution the historical book is written by a japanese author which i think it's so funny the manga brutal like all the trigger warnings you could think of are in this manga it's fucking brutal and the fact that this is based on real life fuck the french like ew the french literally ew the french i i liked it though um even though a, a little bit too brutal for my style but i'm going to continue the series obviously all right no 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 finally with one of my dearest friends i annotated the fuck out of this book because i couldn't understand the fucking thing about it we're finally getting some answers but some other questions are added to the plot left we are only getting questions why i love nona though um it's really weird because this is a five star series for me but none of the books i gave five stars like the experience of reading these books is like a 10 star especially if you're reading this with a friend it was so great uh we couldn't understand the fucking thing it was wonderful um, I give this, I think, 4.25, yeah. I think the pacing, uh, it's what keeps it from being like a full five stars and also like kind of the world building because there's not really that much. But I think it's part of the secretiveness of the series. And then I read a short story that con connects to this book. If you've read this book that you can read the short stories or else you won't understand the fucking thing, which is the theme of this you know, series. I read As Yet and Sand, it's about Palamides, and I love Palamides so much. I love Palamides, it's my favorite characters aside from Gideon and Nona and Haro. I love him so much. I gave this short story five stars, it was so great. And then The Behemoth, I finished Lightbringer, Writer's Round. Bright Rising is one of my favorite series, point blank, like of all time. Just one of my favorites. Um, Dark Age was not my favorite out of the series. It's the book before this one. Um, I think it was very bleak, but the pacing, again, I think it was a little bit slow in, in some parts, which I think could have been edited out. This is a powerhouse of a book. It's a brick. Everything, though, had to be in the book. Nothing could have been edited out. It's brutal, it's violent, it's great. I cried my way through the last 100 pages. <laughs> you could see it in the vlog. Obviously, my favorite character is not going to be in the last book. Obviously, because that's just the way it is. This five stars, it was just great. Just fucking great. The last book, Red God, is going to be so fucking great. I read volume four of Heaven Official Blessing. Uh, it's my fifth time for reading this series. It's just like one of my favorites. Uh, another Chinese web novel, this time about Chinese deities. Um, just another really fucking great. This is so cool. This is a mystery novel, a romance story, a story about redemption, about revenge. It, just wonderfully crafted. I give it five stars. All the volumes are five stars. Then I read uh, She Drives Me Crazy, which is a contemporary YA romance and it's sapphic about a basketball player and a chief leader. And this is how you do what Better Than The Movies wanted to do. It's like taking cliche and tropes uh, and making them into something fun and a little bit new. Uh, I think this is one of the most perfect YA romance that I've ever read. It's a four stars for sure. Um, it's surprisingly deep, it delves into relationship and how they can affect you even when you're so young. And it's sapphic and wonderful and queer and I loved it. And then I read The Nymph House. Uh, it was supposed to be a vlog in which I read Dark Academia, but I read it in two days. 
Um, so I'm reading Hellbent for that vlog. It's going to come out <laughs> in the near future. Nymphaus, it, it was a weird reading experience because I tried to read Nymphaus so many times. I couldn't not get into it. And then I got into it uh, and I read it in two days and it was great. I gave it, I think, four stars because uh, the um, ending was a little bit like out of the blue and predictable at the same time. Uh, so, so many things were not told to us, so I could not, like physically could not guess the ending, which is a little bit, you know, unpleasant because this is a dark academia book, but it's also like a detective story. It's not like uh, if urban fantasy with, you know, there's ghosts and stuff. Uh, it's a detective story. It follows the pacing and the rhythm of a detective story. Like, it, I, I love detective stories, so this is what it is. Alex Stern, like Galaxy Stern, is the detective of her story. I was warned about, you know, the sexual assault. I was not warned that the sexual assault was going to be happening to a minor, but uh, at least I've read the trigger warnings, read the trigger warnings, because it was a little bit graphic and really tough to read, uh, but it made sense in the whole scope of the story. I also really love how uh, the author dwelled in the story and the history of New Haven and Yale. Um, I think she went to Yale, uh, and this is based on the secret society that she um, witnessed. So I think it's really cool. Uh, I am really hell-bent and I am having a great time, so you know. I had the brilliant idea to finish the month with Mile High. Why? I don't know. I had the audiobook, which made it so much worse. Mile High is a romance book about a, I think, hockey player? I could be wrong. I don't care. And a stewardess on his, like, a private jet flight that flies the whole squad from one city to another. Sometimes you have to make your characters clever and intelligent and able to have brain cells that function in your book. You cannot make every other character stupid. You cannot. The, protag the, the two protagonists, stupid as shit, could not make a decision for their lives that was correct. The secondary characters, stupid as fucking shit! <laughs> My god, everybody was an idiot in this book and I could not, I could not. I was so bored and enraged and then bored again. I give it two stars, but maybe one and a half. I don't know, I don't know. And the narrator for, the narrator for him had such, such a southern, like thick southern accent to it which I don't know who made that decision because I could barely get through it. I had to grow accustomed to it throughout the book where it was such a slow upturn. <sighs> English is not my first language. That was so fucking difficult. Southern accents are fucking difficult, okay? Do not make that mistake like that. We're done. <laughs> I got so aggravated with my high. I'm sorry. Hope you liked this wrap up uh, and you got a little sneak peek into my next video. Uh, I'm also like departuring for London in two days. So you're going to get a little sneak peek into that. If you want to see how that holiday goes in London, I'm going to be like bookshop hunting. I have some socials if you want to connect with me. I'm most active on TikTok, but it's a fun time there. And I'll see you, I guess, in the next video. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mwah.